Welcome to this week's Money Meadows podcast, helping gold and silver investors during these turbulent times. Now, here's this week's market wrap with commentary and analysis from the low-cost precious metals dealer voted best in the U.S., Money Meadows Exchange. Welcome to this week's Market Wrap podcast. I'm Mike Leeson. Coming up later in today's program, we've got a fantastic interview with MoneyMetals.com columnist Guy Christopher. Guy shares some helpful tips on how to talk to your family and friends about the importance of gold and silver and offers up some of his other great insights as well. You won't want to miss my interview with Guy Christopher coming up after this week's market update. For the third week in a row, the gold market traded up near $1,300 an ounce. And for the third week in a row, sellers came in to defend that major resistance level. Gold prices currently come in at $1,291, posting a weekly advance now of 0.3%. Silver also shows a small gain, up 0.5% this week to bring spot prices to $17.13 an ounce. Relatively quiet trading is taking place in both the platinum and palladium markets as well, with prices checking in at $984 and $935 an ounce, respectively. Elsewhere in the metals universe, copper is on the move. On Thursday, copper prices surged above $3 a pound to a three-year high. Base metals are benefiting from a covering industrial demand out of Asia and concerns about limited global supplies. The mining industry nearly got obliterated by the bear market of 2011 to 2015. Whether it's copper, nickel, gold, or silver, metals prices have only recently recovered enough to save more mines from closing. It will take much higher prices to actually bring new production online. Meanwhile, political uncertainty could help drive safe haven demand for precious metals and weigh on the stock market in the weeks ahead. President Donald Trump is growing frustrated with the uninspired and legislatively unproductive leadership of Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. This week, Trump feuded with McConnell and other establishment Republicans. Trump told Congress that it must provide funding for a border wall on its bill to fund the government or else risk triggering a government shutdown. Threats of government shutdowns have happened so regularly in recent years that markets might take it in stride. But the calls on the left for Trump's impeachment aren't stopping. If Trump's rocky relationship with Republican leaders in Congress worsens, that will only put his policy agenda, and possibly his presidency, into further jeopardy. Trump has few allies in corporate America. Silicon Valley is now pursuing what amounts to political content censorship online. First, they come for the alt-right. Then, they come for anyone to the right of centrist Mitt Romney. The concept of deplatforming people who hold political views that offend social justice activists first gained traction on college campuses. It spread to social media sites. Now social justice warriors are going after people's finances. They're getting individuals and organizations they don't like deplatformed from the credit card processing system. This week, leading online payment processor PayPal booted several conservative groups, including Robert Spencer's Jihad Watch. Far from being an organization that promotes violent extremism, its whole purpose is to oppose it. But Jihad Watch was nevertheless financially deplatformed for promoting alleged hate speech. PayPal kicked Jihad Watch out, said it could no longer raise money through them. Why? Because leftist groups said Jihad Watch showed, quote, extreme hostility to Muslims. They equated conservative opinion with hate. The thing about it is, PayPal, just like uh, the other leftist groups that were behind this, notably the Southern Poverty Law Center, they don't allow any appeal. They don't allow you to dissent, to discuss, to debate, to explain. After much outcry from conservatives, PayPal restored the account of Jihad Watch, but many other groups remain blacklisted by PayPal and other online payment processing services based on their political views. Even the leading Bitcoin exchange, Coinbase, has succumbed to pressure to close accounts based on hate lists drawn up by leftists. Very dangerous precedents are being set that threaten financial freedom as we have known it. Just a small number of companies have the technical ability to ban anyone they want from e-commerce for holding the wrong opinions. 
Outrage mobs are trying to retrofit the internet onto the index card of allowable opinion, as free market economist Tom Woods puts it. They probably won't succeed in doing that, but they can succeed in making it financially costly to be politically incorrect. The sudden emergence of online financial deplatforming serves as a warning against going completely cashless. Your access to the digital economy can be turned off by the corporations that control it. Even your ability to use digital cryptocurrencies could be revoked. They are harder to control than credit card systems, but a future law aimed at combating so-called hate speech or terrorism or drug trafficking or something else could force cryptocurrency exchanges offline and relegate Bitcoin to the dark web. In the totally cashless society that bankers and government bureaucrats want to take us toward, people could become digitally purged from the economy. Those banned from using credit cards or smartphone apps would find themselves unable to buy anything. They'd be left to survive through begging and barter. This isn't necessarily where the war on cash and the war on politically incorrect speech will lead. It's where they could lead in a worst case scenario. Other threats such as hacking and digital theft make it prudent for everyone to hold a significant portion of their wealth in tangible form. It's not a bad idea to have a few hundred dollars in paper cash for convenience during an emergency, but physical precious metals are a superior long-term store of value and should make up the bulk of your tangible wealth stash. Well now, without further delay, let's get right to this week's exclusive interview. It is my privilege to bring in Guy Christopher now, one of our featured columnists on our MoneyMetals.com website. Guy is an investigative journalist and published author, but he's also a former stockbroker and veteran of the 101st Airborne serving in the Vietnam War. All of this real-world experience combined with his communication skills has helped provide our readers and customers with some really great insights. Since joining our team, he's written some hard-hitting columns, even one or two that might have challenged you a bit. Guy, welcome. It's great to have you on with us today. Mike, thank you for having me. It's very kind of you. I want to talk to you about two of your recent articles in particular. The first one titled, You and I Have No Right to Be Scared. In that piece, you give an illustration of, of just how bad things have been getting and how incredibly important it is to own precious metals given the current landscape. But even with all the events of the last 10 or 15 years, it, it can still be hard for people to overcome that first psychological hurdle. And I, I want to read an excerpt from your article and then get your comments. You wrote, buying precious metals for the first time is a big move, I know. Now you worry if it's the right decision that perhaps you don't yet know enough about precious metals. You've heard they make awful investments while the Dow is hitting all-time highs. When the time comes to convert some cash into gold and silver, once again, you get scared. Except this time, you have no right to be scared. None at all. Neither do I. Explain your thinking there. Well, it's, uh, psychologically, it might have to do with uh, being in, inside of a crowd. You know, it's easy to do things when the crowd is going along with you, but... My feeling when I was first buying gold and silver, which was about 10 years ago, um, I was all alone and I felt all alone and I couldn't go to, I couldn't go to friends and say, oh, look what I paid $800 for or $600 for. And, uh, when I did once or twice, uh, I got strange looks and like, well, what are you wasting your money on that for? And so, I had to rely on my own instincts that I was doing the right thing. Um, there wasn't a, a big crowd of folks uh, standing there with me, and there wasn't a uh, there wasn't a, a crowd of folks or a line of folks behind me if I decided I made it a made a mistake and needed to turn around and sell it. There was you know nobody to sell it to, and so that was the. That was the impetus for writing that story. I felt that it was important to let folks know that when they have those feelings, they aren't alone. Today, the folks who had a right to be scared were the folks who were buying this stuff 10, 15 years ago when there was no one else standing in the line. 
certainly the world has changed a tremendous amount since then, and, and we've got uh, governments that are just uh, spending money like uh, like nobody's business here, and, and, and the, the dollars continue to get, to get devalued. Uh, precious metals are just an extremely important part of a uh, of a person's personal uh, financial strategy, is it not? I mean, that's that's certainly one of the main reasons I, I think you're you're in the camp that that we're in here. Uh, I mean, you've you've got uh, so many reasons out there to own it. Like you said, I mean, there's no reason to be scared given everything that we've we've got. I guess the, it's it's it'd be a scary proposition to not own any precious metals, right? Well, that's right. Uh, the world was not as scary 15 years ago as it is today. And uh, 15 years ago, we didn't know of all the uh, horrors and uh, uh, manipulations that we are going through today. The, the government, the uh, uh, political structure, uh, trillions and trillions of dollars in debt that we didn't have to deal with uh, back then. But there were indications, and it was those indications that uh, helped those folks who bought gold and silver early on. It was it was their instinct that the indications were uh, were pointing to bad things coming. And then guess what? Bad things did come. Uh, today we have every uh, every piece of knowledge in front of us that says, "Hey, you have everything you need to make a decision right now." Uh, you know what uh, what direction the he- the country seems to be headed in. You know what uh, society uh, societal changes are being made, and uh, you also know that uh, the U.S. dollar is a lot weaker because it is uh, it's been printed into an infinity. That the U.S. dollar is so much weaker now that the that history and mathematics tells us that the dollar is not going to survive, and once you have all that information in front of you, you should have a pretty good uh, a pretty good basis for making an informed decision as to what to do with your money. How did you come up with the idea for this uh, column? Was it was it based on on uh, a real experience you had, perhaps, or what uh, what was the driving force? Yeah, I'm happy to tell that story. I was at a meeting uh, that ran late one night, and as I was leaving the meeting, uh, two uh, Two ladies, uh, married, uh, children, uh, approached me and said, we heard you say something about gold and silver. We'd like to take you to lunch. And I said to them, how about I take you to a coin convention? And uh, we had one coming up in the area uh, about a week later. Now, coin conventions, uh, the name is coin convention, but obviously there's a lot of bullion being sold at coin conventions. So... I met these gals at the uh, show uh, that following weekend and walked them through the the show. You know, it, it's it's a it's an interesting thing to walk into a, a hotel ballroom with fifty million dollars on the table uh, in gold and silver. And we spent about an hour uh, meeting people and looking at the displays. And I was explaining, you know, this is a roll of this and this is a bag of that. And they'd never you know, really noticed. 90% silver. They didn't know what a bag of 90% silver was. They'd probably never seen a, a silver eagle, or a gold eagle for that matter. And we sat and talked, and they kind of looked at each other, and I said, well, perhaps uh, these gals aren't ready. And I mentioned to them, why don't we go get a cup of coffee? So we went to the coffee shop, and we sat there, and we talked for a moment, and uh, they said, well, we're kind of we're kind of scared about this. Uh, you know, this, this is a lot of money to be uh, forking over for, for this stuff. And that's when I said to them just off the cuff, you don't have a right to be scared. The guys who, the guys who were making these shows 15 years ago when there was nobody else in the show, when they were the only customers in the room, those are the people who had a right to be scared. And they looked at each other, and I said, well, I don't know if I've lost them or not. Uh, I got up and uh, refreshed my coffee and came back and I said to them, well, I guess, uh, I guess ladies, uh, I'm going to stick around. And they said, no, we're ready to go. We're ready to buy now. And over the next hour and a half, uh, with my help, they spent $15,000 buying for the first time in their lives, gold, silver, 90% bags and stuff like that. So I never forgot that story. 
the two ladies have become very good friends of mine. Uh, their families and I are very good friends today. And uh, they are still buying gold and silver. I hear from them all the time. Well, that sort of leads me to my uh, next uh, next question here, and then we want to move on to the uh, to the other column or one of the other columns you you penned for us, uh, one titled "What to Expect When Telling Friends About Gold and Silver." You mentioned a success story there, but we often run into a lot of opposition, and I don't know if it's my imagination here, but it seems like most people are are programmed to turn their nose up at gold and silver as either risky or wacky or. You know, somehow a stupid thing to own. You know, why is that? Do you think it, it's it's simply because uh, Americans have been conditioned to uh, see uh, money, gold and silver, credit cards, dollar bills in a in a way that is uh, is unhealthy uh, financially and monetarily. For the last eighty years, the government has been. Uh, pretty successful in drumming gold and silver out of the American psyche. Uh, they replaced it quite uh, easily, I think too easily. They replaced the constitutional money, gold and silver. They replaced it with credit cards. They replaced it with debt. They convinced Americans uh, that debt is money rather than gold and silver. And they had the uh, the schools help them. Of course, they, the government fund schools, and so uh, schools do what governments tell them. They had Hollywood on their on their side, uh, and of course they had the media on their side. And so for decades, Americans have been hearing that it's good to be in debt. I mean, if you watch television, uh, uh, one of the ads I see constantly is, you know, uh, let's go get a credit check, you know, let's get a free credit check. Well, gee whiz. Uh, I don't see any ads from the government saying, hey, you know, you should be buying gold and silver. And uh, I suppose that if uh, if it's that difficult to get folks to get interested in gold and silver, that it shouldn't be a big surprise that you can talk to 100 people and only find two or three who are actually interested. And after a while, you're almost, you're almost ready to give up. I found... Uh, a technique that I call the kitchen table seminar. I invite folks who seem to be interested to my house, or I get an invitation to their house on a Sunday afternoon, and I sit down at their kitchen table with them, and I spread out gold and silver on the kitchen table. I've found that once they get a, a silver eagle, a one-ounce silver eagle in their hands, uh, they seem to have a better, you know, better idea of just what it is we're talking about. You know, there's something about a, a gold coin in your hand that is kind of magical, uh, and it's it's certainly a lot easier to convince a close friend or a relative that they should take a hard look at gold and silver when you can show them that your money is where your mouth is. Now. Obviously, you have to sit down with trusted folks. You know, I don't invite strangers in. But I do find that uh, my success rate is a little higher than average when I sit down with folks and uh, show them, you know, empty a bag of 90% silver on the, on the table, and uh, folks perk up. And they say, well, that looks like the old change from the, you know, from the old days. Well, it is the old change from the old days because they made it in silver. And now this old change from the old days is worth a great deal of money, a great deal of, you know, paper money. That demonstration I found is a lot more effective, and it's obviously more effective than just sitting and talking to someone over a cup of coffee. I think we can all relate to uh, the struggles of, of trying to uh, get the point across. And uh, if you if you got your conviction, then don't lose that and uh, just continue to fight the good fight. I really do believe, like you do, that it's uh, it's incredibly important that people have some sort of protection against what may be coming and a collapse in paper that seems somewhat inevitable. So uh, certainly want to uh, continue to share share the gold and silver story with folks who, who have not heard it or, or don't seem to uh, buy into it just yet. Uh, now, you, you also point out the great hypocrisy 
controversy that's taking place in government and among the central banks. So, well, on one hand, they're tirelessly trying to get the citizens to look down on precious metals. They're secretly dealing in gold behind the scenes. Explain what's happening there. We could start with Ben Bernanke, who told uh, Ron Paul a few years ago in uh, congressional hearings that uh, Ron Paul asked him, uh, is gold money? He said, well, no, it's it's an asset, but it's not money. That is the official line from the government, but the truth is that uh, governments know darn well that gold is money. Uh, we know that because they hoard gold, and they sell gold, and they do it secretly, and they won't tell us anything about it. You know, it's been quite a few uh, years since we've had a a proper audit of Fort Knox. 1953 uh, was the last credible audit of Fort Knox, and the reason we can't get uh, any hard information on where the gold is and who owns it is because the government doesn't want us to know about it. The government prefers that we see the dollar bill as money. The dollar bill is debt. There's nothing backing it except full faith and credit. And that full faith and credit right now is on, a, is on the edge of the cliff, as we all know. So with that situation that the government won't tell us what's going on with our own gold and silver, which, you know, is, that's America's gold, it's not the Federal Reserve's. With that situation, it tells us that the government is in trouble. It tells us that the government is keeping secrets that they cannot possibly reveal, because if, it, if they do reveal those secrets, a lot of trouble is going gonna, is gonna to come their way. They're protecting themselves, not protecting the country. Definitely something people need to be uh, very mindful of, uh, what's happening on that front. Well, well, Guy, great stuff. Thanks very much for your insights. I have to say that I, I personally have really enjoyed your writings and look forward to, to reading more, as, as well as having you discuss those uh, with our audience here. So keep up the good work, and uh, hopefully we'll talk with you again soon. Mike, I appreciate the uh, opportunity to share some of these thoughts with you. Thanks for your invitation. Well, that will do it for this week. Thanks again to Guy Christopher, Money Metals columnist. Check out his work at moneymetals.com. And tune in next Friday for our next weekly Market Wrap podcast. Until then, this has been Mike Leeson with Money Metals Exchange. Thanks for listening, and have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you for joining us for this week's Money Metals podcast. Be sure to come back next week and don't forget to subscribe to our podcast through iTunes for answers to all of your questions or to discreetly and securely buy or sell gold or silver coins, bars and rounds. Call 1-800-800-1865 or visit www.moneymetals.com. Our knowledgeable and no pressure specialists are standing by for your call between 7 a.m. and 5.30 p.m. Mountain Time, Monday through Friday. Again, visit us at www.moneymetals.com.